Good morning all, and today this video is going to be about these finger pull cutters, and this is a half inch version. It's still very tiny, it's like the size of a really small doorknob. Well, a very small doorknob, and as you can see the dimensions, it's only 19mm wide in total. But we're trying to make it work on these melamine faced birch doors. We've got nine of them to do. Very expensive material, so we can't mess it up. So we're going to be using a bit of scrap, hopefully make up some kind of rod or template to run the router off. Because these cutters don't have balls on them, ball bearings. So we're going to have to make a, a little rod up, shall I say, template. I'm not going to be pushing these through a machine, otherwise they'll all get scratched up. So that is the idea. We're going to put it in a nice big heavy duty Makita router. Um, get some scrap and see what it does. Right, so just we've got the router set up where I think it needs to be. We've done a couple of little test runs. See, we just plunged it in, nothing major, just to see how it actually works. This one seems to be the one where it leaves a bit of about 5mm um, lip the back of the door, this is the front, and then it gives you that finger pull there. But the problem I have is when you router into the birch, what part of the birch are you gonna get? You're gonna get a joint where it's half black. You know what I mean? When, it's, when it plunges through, you might get a joint, a black joint or a white, or it might be a bit grainy with ply, going through ply. Anyway, we need to test it on a bit of melamine face birch because the whole wardrobe, external, um, all the cheeks and all the doors are made out of um, melamine face birch. I'm just going to plunge it in just to see how it reacts and if it chips. So I wanted to do it to see if it's going to chip out any of the melamine. Well, you can see here what I mean. Look, it's it's not nice, light birch colour there. We've got like a horrible piece come through, and it's gone black as well. It's burnt it a little bit, but it hasn't chipped out the melamine, which is good. And there's going to be minimal sanding. What we're going to do is make a template around the door. So we put the door on. Um, I think we're going to have to, do you know what, it hasn't actually scratched the door, I was hoping that we could just run the routes directly on the door and it's not going to scratch. I don't think it, there is any marks whatsoever from the router, but you may be able to run the router directly on top of the door. So it's just going to be a strip of 6mm that just sits on top, just use one of these old templates. And we'll just do a little cutout. Clamp it on the door, so we just line up with the bottom of the door every time. All we need to do is flip it over, depending on left hand or right hand. That will always be the bottom, that will always be the top. Um, so the cutout will be there, we just put it on the door, clamp it on, run the router, external part of the router. Because it has no wheel on the actual cutter itself. Um, and sort of using this as a fence. Imagine we were running a piece through a router table or a spindle, we would use the fence as our stopper, wouldn't we? So we're effectively doing it back to front using our template, our rod, as the fence, the, the router to run around the notch that we're gonna take out, giving us the shape of the handle. So that's what we're gonna be on next, trying to make that um, template up. Right, we've plunged it a few more times. We go down too low. If we go down to this pine or this light birch level, as you can see, we've tried there. At the top, the cutter takes too much off of the face of the door. If we go um, to a nice setting on the top here where we want a nice amount of meat, then we get brown on the actual inside of the door. If we go up a little bit more to get the light colour again, which is the only other option, so we don't get this routed face, it becomes quite thin. You can see the, you can see there. You look directly at this. I think we're going to have to go with that, but by lifting it up, it becomes thinner at the top. 
but I think this is the only option that we have. So we need to set up our router. Sean, put the router in the, on that on that little um, first notch, yeah. So we're gonna have to, now we've got that setting, we wanna come in about 20 mil, so we need to work out the distance from the tip to the edge of this router, tip of the door cut to the edge of that router. So basically we need to think, okay, well, let's take it away. We want about 20 mil here, I'm imagining, 20 mil to get your fingers in from there to that point there. And that point there was the inside of this curve here. So it's gonna be 20 mil from the edge of this door to the start, then from that point there to this router, we've got to measure that and then add it together. And that is gonna be how far away this fence is. And we'll put little stoppers on it. All right, so now we have got the template set up. Um, what we're doing is we're coming up 10.30 to the start. So we've got 3.60. And we're coming across 95, no, 105. And what that does, it will give us a 200 slot by 25. But we haven't got the template in line with this scrap at the moment. We've already tried one. This is just a little tester, just for the sake of the video. Um, uh, we did get a little bit of burning, so I need to figure out a way of routering this without getting a burn. So that's what I'm gonna try now. burns really did I? So a little bit of a burn there. Yeah so what I need to do now is just clean this face up with a bit of 120 and 240. I mean I don't really want to go across the grain. If I was to do it properly I'd have to go with the grain but it's such an awkward piece I think I'm just gonna have to just get the paper in any way there. Maybe get a block. And then to get these curves, I'm going to have to just roll up a little bit and get into the curves, which is easier said than done. And also this cutter leaves quite a sharp edge, the way, we, the way we've set it up. So I'm just going to have to be very careful and just take those arises off. And just take that sharp edge off. And also these edges as well. There and there. Remember, this is only a test piece. Can't make a mistake on these doors. They're too expensive to make mistakes. There we go, what do you think? Do you like them? Would you have one? First time I've used a thing pull. There you go. So once two doors are together, it's gonna to give a 50 mil sort of rectangle. Just pull it open. Right, well, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go and set up one of the doors and make sure we do it properly. Right, so now we've got it all solved. We have done a test piece. We've routed out a couple of doors now. There's a little mini door and we've got two doors over there. We're gonna just show you one start to finish. So we're gonna lay it down. So we know we wanna route the top face. So lay that down then, Sean. Then we've got to work out the top and the bottom of the door. So every time we make doors, we always mark what the top is. That hasn't got a mark on that side. So the top, top must be down there. There's, there you go, you can see top. So we know that's the top. We know the hinge edge is right at the back. So we're gonna be routing this front edge and we know it's the top face. So we know we're right routing along this top edge here. So if you grab the template, we've marked the bottom of the template and the top of the template. We're making the template flush with the bottom of the door every time. 
and it's absolutely critical that we get it completely flush at the bottom because we've got a pair of doors side by side we need these notches to line up against each other otherwise you'll have steps between the two handles it'll look horrendous how's that now yeah okay so now we're going to get clamp either side of the opening not too close about 100 mil away you don't want to get in the way of the router and then one here as well okay so we're going to double check before we router it because we can't make mistakes so we know the top there that was the top of the door because i showed you the marks we know the hinge the hinge circles were at the back near the wall so we know that's the back edge and this is the front edge of the door this is the front face because it's got no holes on it and we've made the template flush at the bottom of the door completely and flush at the front so i think we're good to go every time we do one we're going to tick it off so we've already ticked off this door here just to make sure that we're doing it right we've done that door we've done that door haven't we done this door as well yeah, yeah. oh we can tick that one left-handed tick i mean right-handed hey <laughs> <laughs> so i'm going around the outline first but I'm not necessarily going right up against the edge. I'm going to leave it sort of five mil and five mil and then take out the meat. Once I've taken out the meat, I will then go round once more because it does burn quite easily. If I leave it in one place for too long, it will burn. <laughs> That's one. You can see where I'm coming to there. <laughs> Alright, so there you go, you can see most of the meat taken out. Still need to take out about six mil there, six mil there, and the remaining at the front. So I'm gonna try and do that in one pass now. Again, when you're out ring, don't want it moving around, otherwise it's gonna mark this face. So you've got to keep your hands locked into position. We'll go up against the template now. And we'll go back to it. There we go. I see it did burn a little bit there. That's what happens with this ply. There's a little bit of a step here. I'm going to go around once more. Can you see the actual face? Got that little line. Let me go around and try and take that out. Yeah. The best it's going to get, I'm afraid. In, in terms of the burn and that mark there. I like the look of the handles. It's a lot of faff, isn't it, for one handle? What's wrong with just a bloody knob? <laughs> <laughs> so you know how you do that, then the next thing you've got to do is you've got to sand it up and then you've got to get all the burns out. How do you get the burns out? They're awkward. Roll up a bit of paper, then use P60, then P100, work your way through the grips without scratching the face, then you've got to take the irises off. Hope that you don't get any breakout. But there we go, it does look good overall. Let's take this template off and show you what it actually looks like. Yeah, there we go. And I will show you a link to this cutter. It's a CMT. Didn't go for trends, I just went for the cheaper version. The trends about £80. This one was 45 it looks like that. And I use a nice heavy duty router, that's why I use my Makita rather than my Ryobi. Got a bit more power. Uh, just be careful that the actual face of your router doesn't scratch your doors. So if it is melamine faced or veneers, you've really got to be careful. 
Um, so yeah, I'm going to put a link up on that. I do recommend this. I wouldn't recommend going for the bigger version. This has got just enough lip on it. So I'm going to close the doors. Okay, all the doors are done. So we've got eight over there and one there. Um, they're all the trims for the wardrobe. And all we need to do is the draw fascias, exactly the same method. But this one here, we just need to find the center line of the draw. And on the template, on this cutout, I found the center line of the actual notch. So I'm just gonna line up the center lines to get me the center of the draw. So the handles are center. <laughs> so there's our three draw fascias and we've matched them as best as possible and um, before we've marked all the centers so we know which way around they go and what top, middle and bottom is. Um, and Sean has sanded this one up and trimmed it so it's nice and, well, it's finished now. He's got to do the other two. So I'm gonna take this one off and put it on the bench. There we go, so I'll line is squared up enough so when we get the um, template on it can line up to that so there we go see the line is at the top of the notch flush at the front in line so we've got, got the template center same method as the doors just clamp them good old clamp so it doesn't move there we go all right so you might as well watch me do this as well so Again, I'm just going to leave 6mm board all the way around. I could, could probably take this mask and tape off now so it doesn't roll up. done let's take it off and show you what that looks like you do get a slight bit of breakout but it doesn't matter it's only what we've taken out it's not part of the, the drawer so that's that's quite nice let's see what it looks like if this was MDF I'd 100 percent be using um, a mask I mean I should be using a mask but apart from a bit of a sand up too bad is it? A nice finger pull. And we're going to do that on all three drawers. There are two more, then the job is done. Just need to sand them all up. So yeah, hope you found that to some use. And if you've got any questions, just send them through, leave a comment, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thanks guys, see you next one. Bye bye bye.